You're walking through a prehistoric jungle, surrounded by towering trees and thick vines, when you hear a rustle in the undergrowth. Out steps a creature so massive, it would make Bigfoot look tiny in comparison. This is no ordinary animal, it's a towering, shaggy giant, built like a gorilla, but far larger. It's easy to imagine it as King Kong's gentler cousin, roaming the forest in peace. Just its shadow would be enough to stop you in your tracks, and if you were a predator sizing it up, you'd likely think twice before approaching. Here's the surprising part. This wasn't a rampaging monster out of a movie, far from it. This colossal creature, despite its size, was a peaceful herbivore. It spent its days foraging for fruits, bamboo, and other plants, much like a prehistoric vegan. Even so, with a height of about 10 feet or 3 meters, and weighing over 1,200 pounds or 544 kilograms, it was one of the most awe-inspiring animals ever to walk the earth. This is Gigantopithecus, the largest ape ever known. Think of it as a supersized version of today's orangutan. Gigantopithecus lived in the dense tropical forests of Southeast Asia several million years ago, at a time when jungles were thriving with life. Exactly speaking, this extinct genus of ape inhabited southern China from 2 million to approximately 300,000 to 200,000 years ago, during the early to middle Pleistocene epoch. It was the undisputed king of its environment, not because it hunted or fought for dominance, but because its sheer size ensured it had few natural threats. Really, who would dare challenge something so enormous? Its teeth, large and perfectly suited for grinding tough vegetation, tell us it had a plant-based diet. It wasn't a creature of conflict, its size alone was enough to command respect. Gigantopithecus is often compared to Bigfoot, and the similarities are easy to see. The size, the mysterious nature, and the forest-dwelling lifestyle all fit the image of the legendary Sasquatch. In fact, some theories suggest that stories of Bigfoot might have been inspired by ancient encounters with creatures like Gigantopithecus. Others might see a resemblance to King Kong. Although Gigantopithecus wasn't a skyscraper-scaling, plain-swatting beast, instead, it was more like a gentle giant of the jungle, living peacefully in its lush environment. Gigantopithecus black eye was named by anthropologist Ralph von Koenigswald in 1935, based on two massive lower molar teeth that measured 20 mm by 22 mm, or 0.79 inches by 0.87 inches. The name black eye honors Canadian paleontologist Davidson Black, who made important contributions to human evolutionary studies in China. Von Koenigswald actually found the teeth in a Hong Kong drugstore, where they were being sold as dragon bones for traditional Chinese medicine. These teeth were later traced back to Guangdong or Guangxi in China. The original specimens are now kept at the University of Utrecht. In 1955, Pei Wenshong's survey team collected 47 more teeth from dragon bones shipments in those same regions. Then, in 1956, they found the first in situ remains, including a molar, a premolar, and the first mandible, in a cave in Yusui Mountain, which was later named Gigantopithecus Cave. Between 1957 and 1963, the team uncovered two more mandibles and over a thousand teeth. In 2014, a fourth mandible was discovered in Yangliang, central China. The large accumulation of teeth in caves is thought to be because of porcupines, which gnaw on bones for nutrients, but leave behind the enamel-covered teeth. This helps explain why teeth are so common, while other skeletal remains are rare. Confirmed remains of Gigantopithecus have been found in 16 different sites across southern China. The northernmost sites are Longgupo and Longgudong near the Yangtze River, and the southernmost is on Hainan Island. Some potential remains in Vietnam and Thailand might belong to Gigantopithecus, although some could also belong to the extinct orangutan Pongo Weidenrechia. In 2016, 
Two jaw fragments from Java, Indonesia, were tentatively linked to this genus. The oldest known fossils date back to 2.2 million years ago from Baikong Cave, and the youngest range between 295,000 and 215,000 years old. Found in Shuangtan and Gongshiskan Caves, these findings help us understand the distribution, ecology, and eventual extinction of the largest ape species ever discovered. Gigantopithecus was a herbivore, primarily consuming C3 plants such as fruits, leaves, and other forest plants, as indicated by carbon-13 isotope analysis. Its robust mandible suggests it could chew tough foods, but this same dental structure is found in modern apes that eat soft leaves or seeds. The species had teeth with a lower rate of pitting, similar to chimpanzees, indicating a more generalist diet. Gigantopithecus likely chewed fibrous materials and abrasive items, like bamboo shoots and tubers. Oxygen isotope analysis suggests it consumed more low-lying plants, like stems and roots, than grasses. Although some grasses were identified in its diet in 1990, with oral phytoliths found on teeth from Gigantopithecus cave around 400,000 to 320,000 years ago, the majority of phytoliths resembled fruit from the fig family, including figs, mulberries, breadfruit, and banyans, suggesting fruit was a significant part of its diet. The 400,000 to 320,000 year old middle Pleistocene teeth from a Heixiang cave near the time of Gigantopithecus's extinction show some differences compared to earlier material, potentially indicating a specialized diet adapted to changing environments. Initially, in 1957, it was believed that Gigantopithecus was a cave dwelling predator. But this hypothesis was later discarded due to its dental anatomy being more consistent with herbivory. In 1975, Tim D. White suggested a bamboo specialist niche for Gigantopithecus, similar to the giant panda. But the thicker enamel and hypsodonty in Gigantopithecus suggest different functionality in its teeth. It took about four years for Gigantopithecus's third molar to fully form. This is on the longer side compared to humans and chimpanzees. The enamel on the teeth grew at a rate of about 4 micrometers per day, similar to baby teeth in modern apes. Researchers also found a protein in the enamel called alpha-2-HS glycoprotein, or AHSG, which in modern apes helps with bone and tooth growth. In Gigantopithecus, this protein might have helped with forming enamel over a long period of time. Gigantopithecus teeth had a high cavity rate of 11%, which suggests it likely ate a lot of fruit. Many teeth found in Gigantopithecus cave show pitting, where the enamel formed unevenly with holes and grooves. This can happen from malnutrition during growth, possibly due to food shortages at times. One specimen from Yanliang cave had a missing tooth before the third molar grew in, which shows the individual survived for a long time even though it had trouble chewing. Gigantopithecus showed signs of strong differences between males and females, suggesting there was intense competition among males. However, their upper canines didn't stick out much further than the rest of their teeth, meaning they likely didn't use them for displays in fights like some modern apes do. Gigantopithecus was likely not often preyed upon due to its massive size and strength, which would have made it a formidable creature at the top of its food chain. However, it could have faced threats from natural predators, particularly when it was younger or weaker. There is no definitive evidence to suggest that predation played a significant role in its life, but it's possible that it faced some danger from large carnivores or apex predators, like big cats or hyenas, if it lived in regions where such animals roamed. Its dense forest or cave habitats could have provided some protection from these threats. While Gigantopithecus itself may not have been a frequent target for predators, competition for resources could have been a significant challenge. Its environment may have been shared with other large herbivores, leading to competition for food. Additionally, environmental changes, food shortages, or diseases might have played a role in its survival, though these factors are harder to pinpoint. 
Although there is no direct evidence that humans hunted Gigantopithecus, early humans like Homo erectus may have interacted with or competed with it for resources. While Gigantopithecus was likely too large and powerful to be preyed upon easily, humans could have indirectly affected its ability to thrive through competition for food, habitat, or other resources. Gigantopithecus was a massive, extinct primate that lived millions of years ago in Asia. Some individuals grew up to 10 feet tall and weighed over a thousand pounds. This herbivore likely lived in dense forests, feeding on bamboo, fruit, and leaves. In contrast, the Yeti is a mythical creature from Himalayan folklore, often depicted as a large, ape-like being. Despite numerous stories, there is no scientific evidence to support the Yeti's existence, and it remains a figure of legend. While both creatures are described as large, ape-like beings from remote regions, Gigantopithecus is part of the fossil record, while the Yeti is a myth. Some speculate that Yeti sightings could be misinterpretations of Gigantopithecus remains or relic populations, but this is purely speculative. The chances of Gigantopithecus surviving today are extremely low. It went extinct around 300,000 years ago, long before humans spread across Asia. Fossils date back to the Middle Pleistocene, making survival into modern times unlikely. Additionally, the dense forests and bamboo forests it once lived in have since changed, reducing suitable habitats. Gigantopithecus also required vast amounts of food, such as bamboo, fruit, and leaves, and the environmental changes likely made it impossible for such a large herbivore to survive. While there are occasional reports of giant ape-like creatures in remote Asia, there's no specific evidence to suggest that Gigantopithecus or anything similar still exists. These sightings are likely misidentified animals or hoaxes. Sivapithecus is a genus of extinct apes, with fossil remains dating back to about 12.2 million years ago during the Miocene. These fossils have been discovered in the Sivalik hills of the Indian subcontinent and in Kutch. One or more species from this genus may have been the ancestors of modern orangutans. Some early finds were initially given separate names, such as Ramapithecus, Rama's ape, and Brahmapithecus, Brahma's ape and were thought to potentially be human ancestors. The first incomplete Sivapithecus specimens were found in northern India in the late 19th century. In 1932, a discovery in Nepal was named Ramapithecus, with G. Edward Lewis proposing that its jaw resembled a more human-like structure. This idea was revisited in the 1960s, but was later contested by biochemical studies which revealed that there had been an early split between the ancestors of orangutans and the common ancestors of humans, chimpanzees, and gorillas. In the 1970s, more complete Ramapithecus specimens were found, showing that they were more similar to Sivapithecus, so the latter name was given priority. It's possible that some of these fossils belonged to female Sivapithecus. Ramapithecus is no longer considered a human ancestor, in 1982, a significant fossil from the Potwar Plateau in Pakistan revealed similarities to orangutans, reinforcing the theory that Sivapithecus was closely related to them. In 2011, an upper jawbone of Sivapithecus, dating back to 10.8 million years ago, was discovered in Gujarat, India, extending its known range. However, the species remains unidentified. Sivapithecus had an approximate body length of 1.5 meters or 5 feet, similar in size to a modern orangutan. While it resembled a chimpanzee in many respects, its face was more similar to that of an orangutan. Its body proportions and wrist structure suggest that it spent significant time both on the ground and in trees. With large canine teeth and robust molars, Sivapithecus likely consumed tough foods, such as seeds and savanna grasses. Fossils of the jaw and partial skull exhibit features similar to orangutans, including a concave face, large zygomatic arches, widely spaced eyes, a smooth nasal floor, and enlarged central incisors. However, some researchers, such as Yawalak Chaimani and colleagues in 2003, have pointed out that Sivapithecus's dental features and postcranial skeleton do not fully support the theory of a close relationship with orangutans, and therefore, the affinities between the two remain uncertain. 
Oranopithecus is an extinct genus of Eurasian great apes with two species, Oranopithecus macedoniensis from Greece 9.6 to 8.7 million years ago and Oranopithecus turkei from Turkey 8.7 to 7.4 million years ago. Initially, Oranopithecus was thought to be the same as Grencopithecus and part of the genus Sivapithecus. However, further research disproved this. Based on its dental and facial anatomy, Oranopithecus may be related to the Ponginae, though some suggest it could be an early ancestor of humans. This theory remains controversial as its features are not enough to confirm a close link to humans. In 1984, some paleontologists placed Grecopithecus and Oranopithecus in the same genus, but later findings confirmed they were distinct species. In 1997, Oranopithecus macedoniensis was reclassified as Grecopithecus macedoniensis. However, the discovery of O. Turke solidified Oranopithecus as a separate genus. A 2017 study supported the idea that Grecopithecus is more closely related to humans, while Oranopithecus retains clear ape-like traits. As a result, the two genera remain distinct. Researchers led by paleoanthropologist Debbie Westaway and her team analyzed hundreds of teeth and a few jawbone fragments found in caves in southern China's Guangxi province. They measured the radioactive decay of elements like uranium in the teeth and bones. That let them calculate how much time had passed since these giant apes were alive. But they didn't stop there. They also analyzed cave deposits like pollen and sediments to piece together what the environment looked like back when Gigantopithecus was still roaming around. Turns out, starting about 2.3 million years ago, the landscape was a mix of forests and grasslands, prime real estate for these plant-loving giants. Life was good, and they had plenty of food to thrive on. Fast forward to their extinction window, somewhere between 295,000 and 215,000 years ago, and things took a sharp turn. The climate started getting a lot less predictable, seasons became harsher, plant communities shifted, and the lush forests began breaking up into more open environments. Not exactly ideal for a creature built to munch on soft forest foods like fruit and bamboo. Here's where it gets even more interesting. The researchers studied the patterns in the fossilized teeth and spotted signs of chronic stress. This stress likely came from food shortages as their favorite plants became harder to find. Gigantopithecus just couldn't keep up with the changing environment. In contrast, orangutans, its modern relatives, showed remarkable flexibility adapting their diet and behavior to survive in the face of similar challenges. In the end, Gigantopithecus's inability to roll with the punches sealed its fate. The researchers put it bluntly. Ultimately, its struggle to adapt led to the extinction of the greatest primate to ever inhabit the Earth. And for those wondering if humans might have had a hand in this, like hunting them or competing for resources, the researchers say no. There's no evidence that early humans had anything to do with the downfall of Gigantopithecus. Its extinction seems to have been all about the environment and the great ape's inability to adapt fast enough.